Good evening and welcome to the March 15th, 1994 Planning Board meeting of the town of Cape Elizabeth. The first order of business this evening is to uh, review and approve the minutes from the previous <coughs> meeting, February 15th, 1994. Is there any discussion, comment, correction? Mr. Judy? Chair. On page three, a couple or three paragraphs down with the paragraph that begins number one. It says, on the plan under entrance details, change note, if paving is continued beyond 50 feet pavement width to be 10 feet wide with four foot wide gravel shoulders on each side, so that, and I question, the gravel will be 18 feet wide. I suggest perhaps the entire road bed, because we're talking about if the road were paved further on. I think Mr. Emery made the motion. Uh, how do you uh, remember? The road bed would be a gravel road bed. I think would be better. Okay. Change that to gravel road bed. And then further down on that page at the end of that section, Mr. Lardner to Ms. Any further uh, comments, corrections? My only comment is, is I remember that the, the, the discussion um, carried on for some time on the, um, the trees and the shrub and what the, the town wanted and so forth and so But I, I think Alice wisely abbreviated that and the end result is is, reflects the, the activity of the board, that's all. Mr. Judy? May I ask one question? Um, I was the only dissenting vote on that, and I don't know that it's important that my reason is in there when the motion passed, but I did say that, um, I think I said something like I felt it was giving away the board's authority to um, let the police department and the tree warden and the applicant make that decision. I'm not bothered that that's not in there as long as it doesn't affect. I guess uh, historically we haven't listed the reasons for opposition. <coughs> if you want that. I don't uh, need it in. Okay. Any other discussion, questions? <coughs> Seeing none, do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Approve the minutes as amended. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Those opposed? It's uh, unanimous. Thank you very much. Although it's not uh, on the agenda tonight, before we start correspondence, I'd like to welcome Roy Carlson. Uh, Roy joins us uh, as an associate member uh, out here on the right wing. And uh, welcome to have you aboard. Thank you. Correspondence. Start with a letter from the town engineer in reference to Town Engineering Services, uh, a little bit of this, uh, discussion about uh, change in wages, etc. Um, planning Board budget recommendations in a letter from myself to Mike McGovern. Those are items that we discussed at the uh, workshop. Next is a letter from the Office of Superintendent of Schools. It's the minute of, minutes of the February 10th, 1994 um, Cape Elizabeth School Building Committee. Uh, which we have been receiving uh, copies of those on a regular basis. Um, next, a memo from myself to the town council um, as chair outlining the, the planning board goals for the <coughs> subsequent year, uh, listing six different goals to attain. Next, a memo from the planning board to the town council as a, as a result of our vote last month. Um, dealing with the sewer amendments recommendation. It had been requested uh, previously, I think, by Mr. Emery that uh, we get some uh, historical background on an earlier decision uh, by the Planning Board and I believe also the Zoning Board of Appeals meetings minutes uh, in referencing the, the Cumberland Farms approval. Um, quite a package here of, of reading. Um, brought some light to that approval process. Next we have um, 1994 Water Quality Monitoring Fair. 
uh, which if you had a chance to take a look through this, it would look quite interesting. Um, I assume that if there's anybody interested in attending this, uh, they might um, contact Maureen. I like this um, the new committee that I'm on. I, it's mailed to me. Is, is this to me? Is that to me? I won't say that. I wa I'm not the chair of the Harbor and Shellfish Committee. There is one, I guess. Next is an uh, announcement of uh, uh, seminars, spring lectures, and activities referencing uh, a better Casco Bay. Begins with understanding the bay. Um, again, if interested, I, uh, any board members take a look at that and contact Maureen. Lastly, um, a town center map. This was in reference to our uh, workshop discussion. Uh, the homework assignment was to uh, utilize this map, I think, to break off into sections when we were talking about uh, different portions of, of the uh, town center zone being treated differently because there are certainly different uh, architectural styles, different influences uh, as such in different portions of, of the town center zone. Uh, that will be utilized in our next workshop, I believe. Is there any other, whoops, yes, there is other, script, other uh, correspondence on the podium tonight. Um, I had asked Maureen uh, in reference to some discussion uh, with Shoreland Zoning Guidelines uh, to photocopy um, just a paragraph in Section 13 under Establishment of Districts dealing with um, moderate and high value uh, wetlands. <clears throat> Next, a letter that I have not even taken a look at. It's um, from the Department of Transportation, from Francis King, and I do not know the, um, the content of this letter. Maureen, are you aware? It's, it's basically an announcement to plenty of board members across the state about the establishment of regional transportation advisory committees and they're, they're basically putting you on notice that these are available and you should be thinking about that when you're thinking about transportation. Okay. Very good. Thank you. That's no substitute for not reading it. Um, and I think lastly, there's a letter from on the podium tonight from uh, Michael Hill our legal counsel for the town of Cape Elizabeth uh, in an opinion letter regarding the Petrus uh, request for wetlands <coughs> operation permit. Might put that with uh, that application. Any other correspondence tonight? Okay. Next order of business under other business is the election of officers. This is the month when we uh, elect new officers to the planning board. Uh, the two officers that we elect are, are both the chair and the vice chair for the subsequent year. Uh, I will start by accepting nominations uh, for chairman of the, of the planning board. Mr. Chair, Judy? I'd like to nominate Mr. Emery for that position, please. Thomas, Emery has been nominated. Do I hear any other nominations? Hearing none, do I hear a motion for nominations to cease? So moved. It's been moved and, do I hear a second? It's been moved and seconded. Uh, for nominations to cease, is there uh, all those in favor? Please raise your right hand. Opposed? Uh, the nomination of Thomas Emery as chair for the subsequent year is before us. So there are no other nominations. All those in favor of Tom Emery for uh, chair person for the subsequent year, please raise your right hand. Those opposed? It's unanimous. One abstention. <laughs> Thank you. Vice chair. Uh, do I hear a nomination for Vice Chair? Mr. Art? Chair, I would like to nominate Judy Lardner for Vice Chair of the Planning Board for the upcoming Judy Lardner year. has been nominated as Vice Chair. Do I hear any other nominations? If not, do I hear a motion for nominations to cease? So moved. It's moved. Do I hear a second? <coughs> second. <laughs> It's been moved and seconded for nominations to see. That was a tough one to get through. Um, all those in favor, any discussion? All those in favor of uh, uh, motion to, for nom nominations to seize, please raise your right hand. Those opposed? There are, there is one nomination for vice chair, Judy Lardner. 
Uh, all those in favor of Judy Lardner for vice chair for the subsequent year, please raise your right hand. Those opposed? Congratulations, uh, both of you. Um, this time I turn the, uh, the chair over to, to Tom Emery. I've enjoyed this uh, the past year uh, with a lot of thanks to Maureen, who sort of carries the bow most of the time, and a, and a special thanks uh, to Alice Allen, who, uh, as I mentioned earlier, to Roy, doesn't miss a word. I don't even know if she needs to use a tape that's rolling, but uh, she does a great job as uh, secretary. I've enjoyed being chair, but I look forward uh, to a year as a regular voting member. I yield the chair to Ms. Emery. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, our past chairman. Uh, please don't leave too early tonight. We have a couple of awards that uh, maybe I'm the only one that knows about, but we will bestow upon you before uh, we leave this evening. Uh, I would, uh, before we start this evening, I'd like to thank uh, Stephen Edsel for uh, serving as chairperson on this uh, planning board for almost two years now. I think the magic that he brought to the position is the fact that he makes it look so easy. Um, I hope my bleeding ulcer uh, <laughs> heals up before the night's over. Uh, this is my first uh, evening, uh, so I welcome you all, uh, as do the rest of the board. We have a reasonably full agenda this evening, so I would like to uh, proceed uh, as quickly as possible. And if I miss some names or uh, are a little, I'm a little informal in first names and last names, uh, we'll get through the evening in any event. Uh, so let's press forward. Um, under old business uh, this evening, the uh, first project is Cumberland Farm Site Plan. Uh, and this is a public hearing. Um, what we'd like to do is uh, Maureen O'Meara will give a brief inter introduction to the uh, history of the project, and then we'd la ask the applicant to bring us up to date uh, to any changes uh, since the last application, and then we'll open it to a public hearing. Uh, Cumberland Farms is requesting site plan review of an addition of a canopy and, and relocation of some pumps and addition of a few pumps at their location on 278 Ocean House Road. Uh, that requires site plan review. At the previous meeting, the board did deem the application complete, and a public hearing has been scheduled for this meeting. Are there any questions? Okay. Representing the applicant, would you please introduce yourself once again for the record? Thank you very much. My name is Tom Greer from Pinkerman Greer. We're the civil engineers on the project representing Cumberland Farms. My congratulations to Mr. Emery and <laughs> Ms. Ladner on their collection. Um, Someone's looking for a vote tonight. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> since the last meeting in February, um, we listened hopefully very carefully in February. There was substantial input from the board to the plan um, demonstrating that, that this particular site is of great concern to the board, that the appearance of the canopy and what happens at this site being at the center of the town um, is of concern and hopefully we've, we've tried to address those the, the best we can. Um, on March 5th, there was a site walk, which we uh, appreciate the board attending and tried to go through some of the plan changes that we've shown here tonight. The first drawing that I'd like to go over here briefly is, is uh, we've taken the center of town and mapped it based on an aerial photograph. And what I've colored in is the area roughly within 250 feet of the canopy itself. So this is Ocean House Road here with Scott Dyer Road coming in. The canopy we have put in here in uh, the bright pink color. The lighter pink colors are the existing buildings. You'll notice that some of the existing buildings are actually a slightly darker shade of, of pink. Those are the ones that um, were listed in the town center report as having historic significance just to give the, the town a feel. This is the library building here that has been of most concern in terms of views and what the canopy is relating to. This is a colored up version of the site plan. Um, what we've done since the last meeting is extended the canopy over all of the fueling stations so it is slightly longer and we have rotated it approximately 30 degrees so that instead of being perpendicular to the existing Cumberland Farm store, it is actually at a slight angle. The reason we have chosen to rotate it is to line up 
the entrance and exit, which is quite common travel for people to enter the site, either from the Scott Dyer Road and park in front of the store and then exit out onto Route 77, or as they're fueling up in the opposite direction as well. So that seemed to make a better traffic flow on site. Uh, we have also modified the plaza area in front of the Cumberland Farms itself to allow those great transitions to be made. We have added a 10 foot wide uh, travel aisle between the fueling stations and the Cumberland Farms store. Again, uh, in response to some comments that many people who come into the store stop for a very brief time and would prefer to have direct access to the store or direct access to these parking stalls. Um, that 10 foot aisle also moves the canopy away from these first parking spaces here, giving adequate room to back out and leave from those parking spaces without uh, interfering with cars that would be fueling. Again, that was also enhanced by rotating the canopy. So I think that's some of the changes. Um, we have shown here in a dark gray the general area that's going to be regraded as part of this project in canopy, um, not shaded at the fuel tanks. My understanding is the fuel tanks themselves, because we're repiping all of the fuel fuel tanks, um, that area will also be reworked, and uh, a new concrete slab will be placed over the over the tanks. The tanks themselves are existing tanks, and they will remain in service uh, at this time. So those are not part of this project. The major change that I think we've made uh, in response to the board's concerns is the overall shape of the canopy and its architectural detailing. The feeling we got from the board obviously was that the, the, the plastic canopy, the standard canopy that Cumberland Farms uses is not what you were looking for in the, in the town center. Um, that we took our direction from looking more at the library and have put a asphalt shingled roof on it and in response to the library's roof have made an actual hip roof going all the way around and added some architectural detailing on the canopy's edge in order to give it a little more relief and a little more, uh, I'm going to say pizzazz. Um, at, that, at the point we got to that uh, stage of the design, um, we felt there was not a whole lot more you can do. The more you dressed it up at that point, the more you were calling attention to it. Um, we want this to blend in and felt that that was, was a good way to do it. So I think the overall design of the canopy has, has, has been changed. We've also added uh, photometrics for the existing lights that are out there. The board had requested that we go and um, do some investigation of, of light, light intensities, both under the canopy and in the parking lot. <coughs> what we see the existing light levels to be is approximately four foot candles from the existing four pole lights that are out there. And we are reducing the light levels under the canopies from approximately 125 foot candles down to a maximum of 75 foot candles uh, in response to that. That is the same light intensity of the canopy across the street when that one was measured. And I think that pretty much summarizes the changes that we've made in the overall plans. At this point, I'd be happy to answer questions. Thank you. I think at this time what I'd like to do is open the uh, meeting uh, to the public. If there's anyone uh, from the public who would like to uh, discuss a project, either pro or con, please Come to the podium and uh, introduce yourself, state your name and address. Is there anyone at this time that would like to uh, address the planning board? Having no one come forward, I will now close the public hearing and uh, open the uh, meeting for discussion uh, to the board. Does anyone have any questions or comments of uh, Mr. Greer's application? I'll go ahead and start, Mr. Henry. Um, first off, Mr. Greer, you did say the lighting under the canopy you're proposing is the same that you measured or discovered under Jonesy's canopy? Yes, that's correct. Okay. 
On the canopy height, it's not clear to me in, with what's been submitted if it is Cumberland Farms' preference to have a 14 plus canopy height or if that is some sort of um, state or federal regulation. As far as we know, it's not a state or federal regulation. It is their preference. It is the standard canopy height that, that the industry uses. There are several manufacturers of canopies, and that's the standard height. Um, we feel very strongly that lowering the canopy um, is not in the best interest of the general public, that there are some vehicles out there that will end up running into the canopy simply because they're used to driving under them. Um, and that's not a position that Cumberland Farms wants to be in. Um, I know it was a concern to the board. If you look at the photo that we had put together, um, I think lowering the canopy actually reduces the view corridor towards the, the library. Um, I think that, that as you walk along there, actually keeping it up allows you to have better views as a pedestrian towards the rest of the town center. So I'm comfortable with that height. I have a question about that photo um, simulation. You had said at the site walk you felt it was pretty accurate with respect to its position, which looks like the southwestern corner of the canopy to the southeastern corner, I guess, of the store is just about 16 feet. And it, it seems more like than that in the photo. Yes. Uh, uh, um, when we walked across the street I, with uh, Mr. Essel, we, we talked about the, the photograph, and it is actually, it is further to the left than what it actually shows. When we laid out the canopy, um, if you look at the photo, you'll see the, the right-hand side of the library lines up with the overhang of the Cumberland Farms structure. Yes. We use that match line to pick the location of where the photograph was taken. What actually is shown on the site plan is the corner of Cumberland Farms, not the corner of the overhang on the site plan. There's actually a six foot overhang there. So <coughs> the, the canopy should really slide over about six feet from where we've shown it. To the right? To the right. OK. Um. I guess at this point I'd like to probably open this back up to the board. I've mentioned several times that I support the town engineer's um, comments and request for an updated traffic study. Um, and I haven't heard any discussion. It seems since this has been identified several times in several publications as a critical intersection in this town, in the um, traffic report submitted by the school, it said it's considered a high accident location by um, MDOT. And I think it's re responsible to require that. But I'd like to hear what other board members think. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Hetzel. Um, before I get to that, I just have a couple other questions. Um, in your diagram of, of the canopy itself, it states it's a 4.3712 pitch roof. Uh, what, how did you come up with the pitch of the roof, I guess, is my question. From a visual perspective, the, the higher the pitch, the more of a band of, that, that uh, gets visually uh, blocked out. Is that similar to the existing? Um, it's a little bit flatter than existing in one direction and a slightly steeper in the opposite direction. The 8 12 they're, they're, Yeah, they're opposite pitches. Uh, the pitch was selected to keep the overall height shorter going in the wrong direction. And the A12s were done so that the, the supports that are held there can come up and support the hip. So it's a support design. A A12 is also a fairly standard roof pitch in, in designing structures. From, from, the, from the last uh, design, I think this has gone from 36 feet long to 46 feet long because you're covering another uh, lane. Would uh, Cumberland Farms be willing to prohibit any signage on the canopy itself other than what's re required by state or federal law? Yeah, I think that's, that's reasonable. We, when we talked about it um, in the overall design of the canopy, um, we felt that putting the architectural edge on the, on the canopy, that that really prohibits any signage up there that, that would be of any consequence. So yes, uh, there may be some, some signage that may be necessary for lane markers or 
something along those lines, instructional type signs, but in terms of advertising signs, no, I don't think the intent is to, is to use the canopy for that purpose. One of the comments that I made earlier was, was uh, pedestrian traffic throughout, through the site, primarily of uh, um, school-age children. Um, asking you to take a look at how it could be improved. Uh, did you see anywhere that a that change could be made? Um, we didn't. It's, uh, it's a difficult thing to do. Um, we thought about striping a, a walkway across the entire site. Um, and that really didn't make a whole lot of sense. You know, it's, it's, our, our suspicion is that, that if you enter from this side, you're either going to go into the store or you're going to walk in a straight line for this, this exit in this side over here. And I think it's just a, difficult to try to control it any other way. Um, there is a sidewalk that doesn't run around the outside of the site. Um, naive enough to think that, that, that that's going to be used unless, unless it's an organized <laughs> walk that right. I think the direct line is where they're going to continue to travel. Uh, We're open to I, suggestions. <clears throat> I, I anticipate perhaps some discussion on the sidewalk continuation to the corner. Yes. And, and I've looked at the, um, I'm undecided on myself. I think it's another 80 feet there to be continued. Yes. Um, I'm not sure how much it gets utilized or where the sidewalk actually goes to. I, I think we have to have some foresight for what might happen with this intersection. Um, I guess at this point, that's all I have to, to, to say about that. Um, if I can follow up sure. a little bit on the, yeah. on the sidewalk issue. Um, we've looked at the sidewalk. This is the section in here that, that you're talking about here. Um, right now, the sidewalk comes out and ends in this location, and there's probably a two foot wide um, paved shoulder along through there that if you were walking, that's probably where you would end up walking. Um, it, it may be possible to widen that section of the road and provide a little more walking space along that edge. What our concern is is that there are also four trees located in that island, and I think it's, it's really necessary to protect those. Um, I think the sidewalk can go in there and protect those, but it's going to be right up against the travel lane. Mm. And I guess that's the we don't mind widening it, widening that area, but I think that's the that's the only place for it to go. Um, in an you know, application later tonight, the, the school plan uh, shows um, a, a sidewalk that turns right uh, from uh, Thomas Memorial Library, but, it, but I don't think it reaches all the way to that point. Uh, it sort of dumps off. <laughs> I guess we didn't show sidewalk. But I think it's a proposed new sidewalk in front of Thomas Memorial. In, in this area. In right. Yeah. And uh, just take a look at how that lines up. I, I think there will be some, um, at least a suggested the discussion issue is, is um, tree preservation um, requirement during construction. And uh, to make sure that the, the existing shrubs are not uh, um, damaged by construction and I think instead of it would be my own opinion instead of asking the applicant to, to design a tree uh, preservation plan to simply request that, that no uh, materials or equipment be stored on the, the light green the island area I don't know how to describe it but the light green area during the period of construction instead of having them develop a whole tree preservation plan, just simply make a note on the plan that's the no storage of, of uh, we, have, we have no problem with that. it's kind of odd Question. I'm glad you clarified it. That, that you're concerned with construction in this area. Right. Um, That's fine. We have no problem. You know, leaving heavy equipment on the root systems of trees and so forth. That's all I have for questions right now. Thank you, Mr. Edsel. Anyone no. else? <coughs> yeah. Mark. Question for Ma Maureen first. Um, I'm not sure what the status is of a possible traffic light or a red, green, and yellow traffic light at this intersection is. Do you know what the status of that is in our future? It's not planned at this time. But it has been mentioned as a possibility for the future. Yes, and there's every possibility that the council may decide that they want to install a light like that at some point in the future, but it's not um, being proposed at this time. Okay. Uh, to sort of go along with that, it seems to me, um, knowing how people are, if we do get a traffic light there, <clears throat> I think will be a tendency to have cut through traffic going through the site uh, to avoid the light, especially in the morning time. 
and that seems to me it might make sense to possibly have a speed bump or something on the outside of the island to at least slow the traffic down um, if that does does occur um, another question the trees that are in question about uh, where the sidewalk could be are those trees of a movable size so they could be moved on site a little bit further so the sidewalk could be wider I don't think so it, it, it may be possible to move. You can move almost any tree. I'll stop there. Um, I, I would be disappointed to see these have to be moved because I think they are now, they were planted roughly in 1984. They've now established themselves. They're growing very well. They seem very healthy. Um, moving them, you always put them under stress. Um, my opinion would be is to work around them with a the sidewalk at this point. Okay. In my last comment, I um, agree with. Um Ms. Lardner, that I think a traffic study might be um, appropriate before this is, goes to approval. If, if I can talk a little bit about traffic. Um, we looked at traffic and what the change in site traffic is when you add fuel islands. Um, it's pretty clear from the literature, and as we pointed out, that the fueling stations themselves do not increase traffic in the general neighborhood on the street network itself. Um, you won't see a, a, an increase or a significant increase in traffic on Scott Dyer Road and Ocean House Road as a result of fueling stations. What you will see is an increase in traffic on site. And I think that's, the, that's why we, when we went back and looked at the 1984 traffic study, um, the 30th hour traffic study, uh, the peak volume was less than what we're dealing with right now. And even with a moderate increase in traffic on site as a result of that, we're still at that same traffic level that, that was projected back in 1984. Um, we believe that the 1984 traffic study was conservative and that that's still a valid study, that by going and doing another traffic study, you aren't going to see an impact on the intersection as a result of adding the fueling stations. Um, so our, our concern here with traffic is not off-site traffic, but actually on-site traffic. And I think we've dealt with that in placing the canopy and the entrances and, and that type of thing. <clears throat> well, excuse me for elaborating a little bit further. Um, I, don't, I didn't mean a traffic study of the entire intersection. What I'm, I guess I'm concerned with is the traffic exiting or entering the site because of the increased capacity to provide fuel uh, in a timely manner. Um, it just seems to me, according to the town engineer, he seems to feel as well that there's going to be considerably more traffic on the site and exiting the site. Um, and I know, especially in the winter time, that the uh, site distance looking towards South Portland from this site um, can be somewhat problematic. I've been pulled out of there a number of times. It, looking this way? Yes. If Under what conditions? Turn left. Under what conditions? In the winter time, with high snow banks or what have you, because there's certainly adequate snow, there's adequate sight distance looking that way, well beyond it. I mean, if there's a snow bank problem, then that snow bank problem exists with every single intersection, every single driveway that you have in town. So it's it's that's a condition that exists simply because of the way the town plows the snow. It's not the sight distance looking left here is more than adequate under any standards. No other comments. Any other members? I said that I would. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. Um, comment on the traffic report, and I, I think uh, it's my own opinion that the on-site tra on traffic flow uh, study, if you will, is is the purview of this board. Uh, that that's our judgment. Uh, I'm not sure that any uh, traffic engineer is going to give us a better sense of how the traffic is going to flow on the site other than what we can see from having been there uh, on a site walk and, and reviewing the site plan itself. I think off-site, um, I, I just, I don't see a need for traffic study in that I don't think that we're going to bring any new data to this site plan application that 
is, is going to be relevant to the traffic flow on site. I don't think that we'll see, this is strictly my own opinion, a significant change uh, from an earlier traffic uh, study. Uh, I'll have to admit I'm not a, a big fan of traffic studies. We have had a lot of them for this intersection, uh, and I think if we request one, we will see the same accidents reported, uh, the, the same information given uh, that we have seen pre previously. Um, I don't know when the, the uh, application for Jonesy Station was, uh, I believe 1990. Uh, was there a traffic study at that time? Before my time. Before your time. I guess it just is one planning board member. I, I, uh, I don't, if we could benefit a great deal from, from having a traffic plan, a traffic study done, I'd be fully in favor of it. I, I just don't see that I can bring a lot of new, a lot of new data to the, to the site plan. Um, one last comment or question that I have of the applicant. Um, in lieu of extending the sidewalk any further from where it is, uh, would you be willing to increase the caliber of uh, the three trees, that uh, the street trees? That you're proposing two inch, I believe, caliper trees. Uh, would you be willing to increase that to say three inch, three and a half inch? In lieu of the sidewalk? In lieu of. I don't see a problem with that at all. Any other questions? Judy? Mr. Chairman, may I'd like to respond to that um, comment about the traffic reports. Um, I understand some of your comments about them in general, but I guess the way I feel is, one, that we look beyond the site. I mean, any site is going to have off-site impacts, and that's why there typically are um, traffic reports done to assess what the impact would do in the intersections and the roadway. I don't think there's any question that um, Scott Dyer, Shore Road, and Route 77 are beyond their carrying capacity. They certainly have plenty of capacity left. But given that, for whatever reasons, this intersection is cited over and over again as problematic, whether it's accidents or the awkward configuration, or I'm not sure if this is what you were getting at, Mr. Parkers, but as you look to the right, when you pull out on 77 going north, the sun is blinding in the winter. We always used to do the hill way cut through, and that can be very hazardous. Sometimes you cross your fingers and shoot out and hope no one's coming because you can't see them. Um, but anyway, I, I feel it's really irresponsible not to know. We, we, our town engineer has not been given anything to look at with respect to traffic. He is citing the um, ITE manual, which is you know, the Bible for this sort of thing. And if the ITE manual says that um, there is the trip generation rates are um, figured according to the number of fueling stations, and if the fueling stations are increasing this much, I think it was responsible that the engineer asked for this information. Um, I also don't know how onerous this would be to the applicant um, since Mr. William Bray prepared a report for the school department um, in January of this year. Perhaps he could give them some very um, inexpensive information by simply uh, updating, for instance, the um, turning actions at the intersection. I don't know. I just feel like when it's identified over and over again as problematic, and here we go saying, well, yeah, this is on this intersection, but we don't really need it. That's Because I don't know that. I haven't been given any information to know whether we need it or not, except a town staff person that we pay who says we do. So that's my feeling on it. Thank you. Any other comments? I, I just have a, a couple of comments. One is the, uh, regardless of where the sidewalk is going, uh, we hope that eventually, eventually we would have sidewalks on both sides of Scott Dyer Road. And this would seem like an opportunity to extend that sidewalk, if not physically extend it, to certainly uh, perhaps take advantage of uh, the opportunity to get an easement uh, to place the sidewalk if that's necessary. Uh, one of the goals of the town center report is to have an esplanade between the sidewalks and, and, the, and the streets. And in order to do that, it appears, at least from uh, the applicant's plan, that the sidewalk would have to be placed partially or all within uh, the applicant's property. Um, so I would, I, would uh, I guess, in, in the motion, or if there's any further discussion, would be interested in hearing the other issues regarding the sidewalk. Um, it was my understanding, uh, or it would be my personal preference, uh, regardless of the sidewalk issue, that for the three trees that you're proposing along Route 77, that those meet the town uh, subdivision standards, 
with a minimum caliper of two inches, which I believe would be taller than the five to six foot height. That's fine. And again, as we explained uh, the last meeting, the, the taller the trees are going in, the more likely it is you'll be able to see into the branches. Uh, the shorter trees and the bushier, smaller canopy trees would tend to be more of a uh, block uh, to the site than the, than the taller trees. Um, I, I'd like to take the opportunity to uh, congratulate the applicant for submitting something other than the standard flat top metal uh, canopy, uh, particularly since this is not a, a locally owned business, but one that has to answer to many other outlets uh, in the corporate headquarters, so to speak. Um, regardless of, of how the uh, board votes, uh, there have been two things that have been done with this application. We've had a photographic uh, presentation of, of the, uh, or montage presented to us. We have s some understanding of what the impact may look like. Uh, we were afforded the opportunity with a site walk to have balloons flown at the approximate location and height of the canopy structure. I believe that's other than uh, for congregate care facilities the first time that's happened since I've been serving on the board. Um, so from that standpoint, I, I feel uh, somewhat encouraged. The last concern that I have is that the existing spotlight uh, that's located closest to the intersection and shines back into the site yes. uh, is unusual in its appearance. I believe that the standard goes up or the pole goes up and that the fixture is someplace on the pole, not at the top, but it looks as though it's been clamped on. And it, in my opinion, spreads a lot of light out uh, and not so much down. And there may be a tendency in driving up the hill in the evening that that's a very bright light because it's coming at you at an angle rather than being cast down and, uh, with, a, with a cutoff. I think with the additional light that you have under the canopy, it wouldn't be as necessary to have as much light going out and toward the building as it would be preferable to have it going down in the area with, where the traffic would be circulating. Um, in terms of a traffic study, I guess my gut feeling is that uh, it couldn't hurt i look to the rest of the board during the, the uh, motion and deliberation uh, to, to wrestle with that issue. At this point, I'd like to, uh, are there any other discussions or comments? Uh, yes. I, I have a question for Mr. Greer. Uh, the um, trip generation manual for, from the Institute of Transportation yes. Engineers. Uh, what types of facilities does that address when it addresses uh, uh, fueling facilities. Is this something geared toward, I mean, how does that relate to our, the case we have yeah. before us? I, I looked at that data. Um, the data is based on uh, interstate fueling stations that expand, and uh, there is a very limited number of studies available. So the, the caveat in the book is, based on the number of limited studies, use the data cautiously. Um, and there is no real good correlation between um, adding fueling stations and actual number of trip generations. Um, it does make it very clear that um, fueling stations don't add significantly to on-street traffic. There's a whole narrative in the, in the package with that, that on-street traffic is already there, that when you go to a fueling station, you're already you're, you are there for a different trip. You may be going to Cumberland Farms to buy a newspaper on Sunday morning, that trip is for the newspaper, you may fuel at the same time, or you may fuel on your way to work, that type of thing. So the, the data in the IT e manual is marginal at best. Okay. Uh, thank you. I guess just my opinion on that uh, uh, for the rest of the board is that uh, this is an existing fueling facility that is being expanded and not an interstate uh, fueling facility being expanded and uh, that uh, traffic engineering considerations that lead to main mall type development aren't necessarily appropriate in the town center anyway. Uh, so I'd be content with the uh, updating of information that's been done to the present by the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Wilcox. This time I'd uh, look for a motion from the board. Ms. Lodge. I'm not prepared to make a motion, but I would make one suggestion. I, I think I would um, go with whatever the majority feels on the board for the traffic report, but I do think that if there is a, um, 
majority opinion that the sidewalk should be extended, that that's something that should be done ahead of time with the plans reviewed and not left um, to be reviewed by, for instance, the town engineer for approval after the fact. And I haven't had, a, I don't have a real sense which way the board's leaning on that or what the town prefers. Maureen, is there something coming out of town hall or public works about whether a sidewalk needs to be there now? The only, the only discussion um, about sidewalks has been from the town center plan. And as, as Tom related, that plan strongly recommends that sidewalks be constructed along both sides of the roads within the town center area. Was this an area identified as phase two or phase three? I know there were several phases of sidewalks. Um, I, I couldn't tell you. There, the, there was actually two different phasing plans, one based on um, one phasing plan was based on what the committee felt were the most important needs, putting those in first. A second phase of the plan was developed based on how we could finance it. If um, Cumberland Farms did do this, what's the likelihood that um, a sidewalk from the western side of their property down along Sky Dyer, I mean, is that going to be built anytime soon by the town? I think there's a fairly good likelihood that that could be constructed within three to five years. Uh, we have already submitted a grant application. Um, it hasn't been formally accepted. Uh, informally, it has been accepted. Any other comments? Uh, just one, uh, I think one last question. Um, Three trees along uh, Route 77, are those the only uh, new trees proposed? Yes, and we have left the species blank. Um, we've heard several comments of what's not acceptable, and we'll leave it up to the town to pick an appropriate species. Could, could I just uh, poll the board with respect to the sidewalk issue before we uh, have a motion? Mr. Wilcox? Um, I feel that the sidewalk is an important feature. It is. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Parkhurst? I agree. I think the sidewalk should be run to the curb cut. Okay. Mr. Edsel? Um, I think the sidewalk is important. I just think it's contradictory to try and to save the trees. I don't, I'm not sure that we're, uh, I think we're going to lose those trees in that area with placing them on the sidewalk. Um, any, um, I think any motion that we would, if we were to make a motion to include a sidewalk, that we should be specific about the esplanade of X number of feet from the, from the curb. The last thing we want to do is leave that open and end up with a sidewalk that, that uh, just about the, the road surface and that defeats the purpose, I, I think. Uh, sorry for the long answer. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, I would also support the sidewalk at this time. Uh, I, would, I would like to uh, entertain a motion at this point. Uh, Ms. Leidner. Um, I pro propose the following motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Cumberland Farms for site plan approval of the addition of a canopy located at 278 Ocean House Road be tabled. Do I have a second? Hearing none. Um, can I ask a question? Tabled pending what? Traffic study? Um, I guess I would still leave that wide open. The things that, that concern me personally are the traffic study, but I think, I guess the applicant could make a decision and the board would vote on that after the fact. I certainly favor it. Um, uh, after what was just said, I think the applicant has some direction that they would go back and try to design a sidewalk. And there are other comments with respect to tree preservation plan, video monitors being installed, um, specifying min minimum caliper of a tree that I assume the applicant would go ahead and do based on this memo. But I'd be happy to modify the motion if someone would suggest something. The reason I made a tabling motion is what I said about the sidewalks. I don't think it's appropriate to have that as a condition of approval. So then you would like to see what the applicant would propose for a sidewalk, including an esplanade and everything else? 
I wouldn't even presume to de design that. It looks awfully tight, and I don't know what a sidewalk should look like right there. Well, it seems to me that you possibly this is the time to do it uh, since we have the opportunity to do one of the most uh, important corners in the town as far as that uh, thing goes. Um, I'd be happy to withdraw my motion and someone can make a different table motion. Well, let's see if we can get a second. Is there any second of the motion on the table? Yes, second. Any further discussion? I just, uh, I, don't, I don't think it is, as far as, uh, I think this this application is, is ripe for for uh, approval or denial. Uh, I have strictly been against uh, approving sites with uh, any length of, of uh, um, conditions. Uh, I, I think if it's a consensus of, of this board that they they want a sidewalk, then we can be specific as one condition um, of, of a motion. I don't see any need for. Um, A condition for that a, a video monitor be installed for fueling points. I think that's state law. I think it's federal law. Yes, Cumberland Farm standard drawings already have those on it. They just weren't submitted as part of this. I, I think the, the condition for uh, any tree preservation plan can be simplified uh, to a, a point of, of just requesting that no storage um, of equipment or materials be allowed on the landscape island during the period of, of uh, construction. And I think the last uh, um, a condition that, that uh, the three uh, trees have a minimum caliper of two inches in the species uh, be consistent with the recommended tree list. Um, and then this, the last is, is a standard condition that we place that, uh, that those conditions be, uh, the plans reflect the conditions prior to issuance of, of the billing. Do I interpret that to be an amendment of the motion? No. no. Um, if it's been withdrawn, I'll make another motion. It was seconded. Oh, I'm sorry, it was seconded. Sorry. Yes, uh, Ms. Leiner. Um, I would just like to respond to what Mr. Essel said. Um, I know you often, more than anyone else, do not like conditions of approval. But again, I, my concern is if this were approved with a sidewalk as a condition of approval, I don't think this board would have any guarantee that any of those trees would exist there. Without seeing any design, I could see maybe the applicant would choose to swing in the sidewalk very close to their parking lot or it could be right on the edge of the roadway if the applicant and town staff recognize that there's no room for an esplanade. I, I hate letting that decision go to staff. I think it's an undue amount of pressure. I, I think we can also. recommend that there's a minimum of three feet or four foot esplanade. Uh, unfortunately, can't take much more than that in that space that it's shown. That's really going to require an easement being you know, drawn up uh, between the town and, and Cumberland Farms uh, to place that. I think the only thing we can do is, is uh, uh, request that, that the applicant uh, uh, work as hard as they can um, to provide protection for the trees while they, they put a, a sidewalk in place. I think the condition of the site being reworked is, is that we, they may lose trees if there's a sidewalk there. That would happen whether the town put that in. Uh, at a later time with an esplanade or whether Cumberland Farms does. Uh, we have a motion on the uh, before us with a second. Any other discussion? Uh, I, uh, in evaluating what Mr. Etzel has said, I think that perhaps uh, some type of an approach with an easement for a few for the future could work and allow um, the. Uh, application uh, which has been substantially modified and improved uh, at our request to proceed. I, I guess I'll get back. I'll ask Mr. Edsel the question then. Uh, would you care to amend the motion? You asked me to amend the motion to table and I, I'm not sure uh, without, I think it's just easier to, okay. to vote than, than restructure uh, the motion. Why don't we uh, go ahead and vote then? All those in uh, favor of the uh, motion, please indicate uh, are you in favor of the motion by raising right hand? All those opposed? <coughs> Do I have another motion? Mr. Chairman, I have a motion for the planning board to consider. Uh, 
finding is a fact. Under farms are requesting a site plan approval of the canopy addition of 278 Ocean House Road, which requires review under section 19-2-9. I'm sorry, dash 10. Number two, the town center plan recommends an installation of sidewalks throughout the town center, including both sides of Scott Dyer Road. Number three, signage placed on the canopy. He would retract from the compatibility of the structure with other structures in the general theme of the town center plan. Number four, the installation of canopy is proposed in part to provide fire suppression equipment in accordance with the state and federal laws. Number five, existing trees on the site serve to buffer the project from adjacent areas are inconsistent with the goals of the town center plan. Number six, the new street trees should be of size and species consistent with the recommendations of the town tree warden and appropriate of the town center. Number seven, the plan with some revisions substantially complies with the standards of site plan review, section 19-2-10. Therefore, be it ordered, based on the plans and the materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Cumberland Farms for site plan approval of the addition of a canopy located at 278 Ocean House Road be granted subject to the following condition. Conditions. Number one, that a sidewalk along Scott Dyer Road be extended west to the curb cut. The sidewalk shall be located to avoid damage to adjacent trees and with a minimum esplanade between the sidewalk and street of four feet. Any portion of the sidewalk that is placed on the Cumberland Farms property shall be accompanied by an easement that allows the public access to the sidewalk. Number two, that no signage be placed on the canopy except for signage required by state and federal law. Number three, that no storage of equipment or materials be allowed in the landscaped border area that may have to be brushed up as far as location. During the period of construction, number four, that the three new trees with a minimum caliper of three inches and a tree species of the proposed trees to be consistent with the recommended tree list in Appendix C of the Subdivision Ordinance. And five, that the plans be revised to reflect the above conditions prior to the issuance of a building permit. Okay, we have a motion before us. Do I hear a second? Uh, can I ever ask one question before we go any further? The, um, the Esplanade, I assume, would have an outside curb? Yes. Okay. There's an existing curb now at the street. There's, there's no curb. existing curb. Okay, so there would be a curb and a four foot Esplanade, and then how much of a sidewalk are we talking about? Five feet? We'll, we'll match the uh, width that goes across the front. That will make that. I think the town now has a standard for sidewalks. I want to clarify that. Yeah, it, but I think it would be wise to, to match the existing. Yeah. I think in, in reviewing whatever the applicant prepares for the town, we'll try as much as possible to stick with the standard. But if we have to adjust it a little bit to reflect existing conditions, we would do that as well. I think that would be reasonable. Second. Motion's been first and second. Any Discussion? Ms. Lardner? As usual, an explanation why I have to vote against this motion. Um, without seeing a sidewalk before us, I'm, I think, given a four foot esplanade and whatever width of an unknown sidewalk we're proposing, um, there's a good chance those mature or maturing trees would be lost. And I frankly would probably rather see trees there than a sidewalk when it doesn't lead anywhere. Thank you. Any other? Comments, questions? Uh, just the comment is that uh, I included the sidewalk proposal because it was a consensus of the board when we went around to, uh, to include that. Okay. I think it's, it's uh, what the motion is indicating uh, is that we would like to have the issue of the sidewalk coordinated between the applicant and the town. Uh, and that I believe that what we would like to do is to have a, a design prepared and, and reviewed by town staff uh, prior to construction. And we would 
uh, that plan should be submitted prior to issuance of a building permit. Okay. We have a motion and second. All those in favor, please indicate by raising your right hand. All those against? Motion carries five to one. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Tom, before the applicant uh, leaves, I just, uh, because I started as a chair on this, I, we did stress this, that uh, it sort of challenged the applicant to come back to this board with something different from the regular franchise uh, canopy, and I appreciate the work that they did. To, I, mean, I, I think I mentioned that the site walk is probably not going to win any design award, uh, but uh, it's certainly a great improvement. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Our next item scheduled under old business is the Petrus Public Access Waiver and Wetlands Application Permit. Uh, is there a representative for the applicant here this evening? Okay. Uh, Maureen, would you please give us background on this application? Um, Robert and Ruth Petrus are requesting a public access waiver and a wetland alteration permit for a new lot they wish to create on Fowler Road. Um, they have an existing lot there and they want to split another lot off of that. They do not have uh, the minimum 200 feet of frontage on a town road. For that reason, they need public access waiver. In addition, the uh, driveway proposed to access the building envelope would cross a RP2 wetland and that requires a wetlands alteration permit. Uh, upon uh, preparation of plans and submission to the town, uh, staff determined that in addition to the, the, the previous uh, challenges to the site, that the front entrance where the driveway would be located is within a 250-foot buffer of Great Pond. Uh, because Great Pond is rated moderate or high value for wildlife by the state, that buffer cannot be reduced. Uh, that's part of the shoreline zoning requirements. And a copy of those requirements were left in the podium this evening. Um, in addition, in the rear of the proposed lot, uh, there is another RP1 wetland that also has a 250-foot buffer. That wetland is not rated uh, moderate high value for wildlife, so it's not restricted from being reduced uh, from 250 feet to a lesser amount. However, there's a question about whether it complies with one of the four criteria that make you eligible for having a buffer reduced. In this case, the applicant is, is looking to have the area determined to be densely developed. <coughs> the application has been deemed complete and a public hearing has been held, so um, the board um, may choose to make a decision at this meeting or it may table it with the uh, consent of the applicant. Uh, the planning board's uh, counsel, Mike Hill, is also here and available to answer questions. Thank you. Would the applicant please uh, go to the podium and introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Bob Petrus, and uh, I brought the application back to the planning board uh, basically to render a final decision. You, it's, it's understood that, that uh, this was tabled at the last meeting some time ago and that you were to go to the town council in search of ordinance uh, language changes. And it's my understanding and I guess the board's understanding that uh, you, d you did not do that. And you're simply bringing the, the same application back to us with no additional information that was tabled uh, several months ago. Yes, on the advice of my attorney. Okay. Uh, with that, I guess what I'd like to do is uh, open up for uh, board discussion. Any comments, questions regarding the application? Judy. Mr. Emmy, can I ask um, Mr. Hill some questions? Certainly. Hello. <laughs> Mr. Hill, would you please introduce yourself for the record? Uh, Michael Hill from Monaghan Leahy, uh, counsel for the town. Okay, one of um, the questions I asked last time, it did not seem clear to me in the ordinance what a driveway is, according to the ordinance. A street is not a driveway because that has to serve more than one residential unit. And um, I think the chart that talks about permitted and prohibited uses in the wetland districts talk about roads, is that correct? That's right. And they don't mention driveways at all? Correct. Okay, so um, my first question would be, since driveways are not mentioned at all, and there is a specific statement that any uses 
structures not listed in the table um, are deemed prohibited. Would you consider driveways are prohibited? Uh, yes, I would. I don't. Uh, it is unclear uh, because there is not a definition of of, uh, of road in this section of the ordinance. If we look at the subdivision ordinance, uh, road is defined as a public or private way which serves more than one uh, lot or dwelling. Um, in, uh, in the zoning ordinance, street is defined similarly. It needs to be public or private serving more than one dwelling or lot. Um, so driveway itself is not defined. It is a, uh, it is not a list, it is not listed as a permitted use in uh, 192802, so it would be uh, deemed to be a prohibited um, uh, use or uh, structure in that zone. Okay, my next question would be, um, because I think the way we left this applicant was that we felt that we had no um, recourse but to deny, to deny based on the recommendation that this was, the driveway was in the 250-foot um, wetland buffer and we could not w waive that. And I think we sent them, tabled them so that they would have a chance to change that. Does that sound correct? Uh, so that they could get a language change with the If council. they could, otherwise we couldn't approve them. That's my and understanding. I, I seem to remember also telling the applicant that even if they were able to obtain that, that the board had to be persuaded that the density standards could be met to reduce the rear buffer. So my question would be, Mr. Hill, is if they are able to demonstrate under whatever standards that this is a densely developed area and hence we could reduce the buffer to 100 feet, if then another section in 19-2802 um, would kick in which says prohibited activities that are part of another activity which has received a special permit under the wetlands provisions are permissible. Do you think that even though we are stating that this driveway would not be permittable given that it's in violation of a wetland buffer that if we ended up being able to approve the house location that the driveway could then be approved? Uh, unless I'm missing something, if, if, the, if the buffer is reduced from 250, 250 feet to 100, then uh, the proposed building envelope would be outside of that area and would not, it, the underlying zone, uh, which is RA, would, would take over. So it would not be um, getting a building permit for that back lot would not be seeking a special a, permit. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? I think that answers mine for now. Thank you. Okay. I want to just make one comment. I, I must have had a premonition. I started addressing the letter to Mr. Etzel, and then I <laughs> said, "Dear Mr. Emery," and uh, so so no one else gets confused. I'm going to change your. Terrific, thank you. <coughs> thank you, Mike. Any other questions or comments from the board? Mr. Wilcox? Uh, for the record, one of the issues which I reviewed uh, fairly carefully was the uh, method of determination of density, just to try to see uh, what the rationale could be for determining the density of, the, of, of a 10-acre area. And the applicant has presented uh, a limited area and then extrapolated it to try to come up with a one residence per acre density ratio uh, by taking seven lots the densest seven lots immediately adjacent to the site, which do not total 10 acres. Uh, if one does, as what I believe the ordinance suggests, to find 10 acres on the face of the earth that have a density of one residence per acre, uh, I couldn't find it in this neighborhood by drawing several configurations of, um, of uh, you know, four, 400 and 
35,600 square foot patches of land, I came up with uh, nine on one of them, but not 10. Uh, it gets worse the more of the applicant's parcel, the more you shift <coughs> that 10 acres to include the applicant's parcel and away from the houses across the street. If you center the 10 acres, for instance, in a circle around the proposed house site, uh, one only picks up uh, four houses. Thank you. Uh, what did you base the house locations on? Uh, uh, the ones that were sketched in on this plan that, from the tax map. Okay. Thank you. Came in our package. Any other questions or discussion? Mr. Chair. Mr. Hudson. I'd like to ask Mr. Hill if you could come back to the podium and have a couple more questions. Uh, I think I understand the um, rationale of the 250-foot uh, uh, buffer area from the Great Pond and Great Pond. Um, and I'm not sure that the application really goes, gets beyond that point, but in my own review of, of the density, and this is the density definition as it existed at the time of, of the, the application, not as it presently exists. Um, the 10 acres seems to be, I'm not sure where that sticks in because it talks about including approved subdivisions of more than 10 acres, the density. Um, so I'm not sure that it's, how did you come up with the idea that you had to put 10 acres on the face of the earth? Well, uh, for one thing, the placement of the uh, commas in that definition um, I believe is there to include approved subdivisions which may not have dwelling units on them. So that if you looked at 10 acres around the subject property, okay, you could include as density uh, if there were a, a five lot subdivision, but it had just recently been approved and didn't have uh, any dwellings on it, you could include that in the density, develop, um, density uh, calculation. Um, because d dwellings could be built on those on those lots, um, you're you're right. It is unclear where that 10 acres could be. Um, it doesn't say um, that the proposed location be uh, at the center of the 10 acre parcel. So it would, as I think, a fair reading of, of that section would be any configuration of 10, acre, uh, 10 acres that includes the subject property. So uh, I think that, OK, here's the proposed uh, site uh, for, the, for the building envelope. You could maybe have the 10 acres be this way or extend down. If, if that proposed building envelope were within that 10 acres, then I think that uh, a fair reading of the ordinance would allow the reduction from 250 to 100. Mm -hmm. And of course, that has been changed so that we, we now have, uh, uh, using uh, the proposed um, uh, building envelope, be the center, and then go out a radius of X. I, I thought initially that that would be a, uh, we could show the intent of the ordinance by saying this is a similar requirement, it's just worded more clearly, but the new ordinance is more restrictive. In other words, it, the, the density is, is higher. The requirement for density is higher. Uh, on, a, on a circle of a 250-foot radius, you have four and a half acres in that, uh, and it requires six houses. So your density is higher. So I, I sort of threw that out as, as a reliable uh, benchmark to, to compare. I said, well, can't use that. In my own logic, uh, I look at this and I say, well, you know, in a vaguely written ordinance, did the applicant do a reasonable job trying to figure out what they were supposed to do? In my opinion, they did, except for they left out the applicant's own home as, as another lot, uh, which is a two-acre lot. It still falls under there, but uh, it only deals with, with eight properties. I, I think my own conclusion is that, that um, the application doesn't get beyond the issue of the mandatory 250-foot buffer, uh, whether it's a street road or driveway, uh, the public access waiver, uh, the, the, the wetlands alteration is, is similar, whether it's a street road uh, or a driveway. 
uh, that this is one of those unwaverable uh, parts of our ordinance. A uh, uh, code enforcement officer um, has told us that more than once. That, uh, it's just something we can't do. Uh, I guess for this one board member that the, uh, the application stops there. Thank you, Mr. Etzel. Any other questions or comments? Can I make a motion? Certainly. Findings of fact, number one, Robert and Ruth Petrus are requesting a public access waiver and wetland alteration permit to split a new lot off their existing lot off of Fowler Road. Number two, the application was deemed complete at the August 17th, 1993 meeting of the Planning Board, and a public hearing was held September 21st, 1994. Number three, <clears throat> The application was tabled to the regular March 1994 meeting of the Planning Board to give the applicant time to pursue zoning, excuse me, zoning ordinance amendments with the Town Council. Number four, the applicant has not pursued any alternatives within the six-month period and has presented the same plan for Planning Board approval. Number five, the proposed driveway location is direct violation of the provisions of zoning ordinance, specifically section 19-2-8-02 permitted uses in section 19-3-906 wetland buffers. Number five, the proposed building envelope and subsurface disposal system is in a 250 foot wide wetland buffer and in violation of section 19-2-8-02 permitted uses. The application does not, number six, the application does not substantially comply with the public access waiver standards, section 19-4-2B and wetland alteration permit standards section 19-3-9. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Robert and Ruth Petrus for a public access waiver and wetland alteration permit for a new lot off of Fowler Road be denied. I have a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Any comments, discussion? Just suggest renumbering of the last two items which were misnumbered on the handout. And I'm sorry. The date, the date in, uh, under findings of fact number two reads September, should read September 21st, 1993. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I would just suggest to the board that um, one of the, uh, that the board address the a density requirement too as a finding of fact and, and whether uh, you, the board feels that the applicant has met his uh, burden of proof in getting the 250 foot buffer reduced to 100 feet. Thank you. Maureen, could you quickly put something together for that? Mr. Emery, I yes. can suggest an amendment right. of sorts. Um, it could fit in as a new Number seven, the applicant has not demonstrated that the standards for considering an area as densely developed as defined in section 19-3-906 apply to the proposed development. And may I ask you, Mr. Hill, if those are the same um, section numbers, even though that's a, we're looking at an earlier density, um, way to compute density. Bear with me while I fumble through the old. I believe there's a reference to it in the uh, next to the last paragraph in your letter. 19-3-906-1B. And I would amend my addition to add on the dash 1B. Any questions, comments? A motion and it's seconded. I will agree to the motion being amended as amended. As amended. Thank you. All those in favor, please uh, indicate by raising your right hand. All those opposed? Seeing none, it uh, passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, the, the motion to de deny passes unanimously, I should say.
Well, Maureen's getting, uh, getting the board prepared. The next item on our agenda under new business, and I would like to welcome our new customers, uh, is the uh, Town of Cape Elizabeth School Department. Uh, and if Maureen would give us uh, some background on this, this is the addition to the and alterations to the middle and elementary schools. Uh, the applicant is proposing major renovations and new construction <coughs> to the middle and elementary school, the school campus uh, located uh, in the southern part of the town center. Uh, they have gone to the zoning board as a conditional use and have received approval for the bulk of the proposals. Uh, they're appearing before the board this evening to begin site plan review. Uh, the first issue before the board would be completeness of the application. Thank you. The board does understand that before we get in, in, into any substantive discussions, we first have to review the application uh, for completeness. What I'd like to do, it's uh, our only opportunity to see this application, application has been uh, in workshop session. I would like a uh, overview if uh, an app, a representative of the applicant would care to give us a uh, brief but thorough overview of, of the uh, proposed project. You can just give us a moment to remove our, Certainly. our materials I guess while the applicant's setting up, I would uh, raise a question of uh, possible conflicts. Does anyone on the board have children in the Cape Elizabeth? <laughs> Actually, Mr. Emery, I, I thought I was going to bring this up at one point. I did work on getting the referendum passed, and I strongly believe in the project. I don't think it affects my um, perspective at all, at all on this. I'd also mention, uh, as I mentioned, the workshop. Uh, Directly after a workshop, uh, I contact Paul Liberty. I stop by my house to drop off a set of plans. I mention that only because that it's a requirement that we we bring that up uh, as board members. And we have outside contact with, with applicants. Uh, I made it quite clear to Mr. Liberty at the time I couldn't talk about specific issues uh, uh, relating to the plans. I would take a look at the plans that he had uh, dropped off. I was up on my roof painting my house at the time. And I hope I wasn't rude. Um, it's just I knew that I couldn't talk about it at the time. Uh, I still know whether it's uh, causing bias or conflict. Thank you, Mr. Wilcox. Uh, I guess I should divulge that uh, Robert Howe, a member of the uh, Building Committee, is uh, president of Terrian Architects, a firm with which I'm employed. Uh, we have not discussed the project, and I do not feel that there's a, an immediate conflict or any serious conflict in the of the other board members do. Again, while the applicant is setting up, I would ask that the applicant uh, keep in mind that both we're looking at both the uh, school project as immediately uh, proposed and uh, the immediate renovations as well as the overall context of the uh, school property. Liberty, before you begin, would you kindly introduce yourself as well as uh, the uh, uh, consultants and uh, administrative administrators that are here tonight? Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. <coughs> Excuse me, Mr. Emery, uh, Planning Board. My name is Paul La Liberty. I am chairman of the elementary and middle school building committee. 
uh, along this evening are uh, Connie Goldman, our superintendent, uh, Ann Chapman, uh, school board uh, chairman, uh, as well as our architectural team, Paul Stevens, Arthur Thompson, uh, Ellen Belknap, uh, Dennis uh, J uh, Judd, and Bill Bray is here as well, uh, who did the traffic study. Uh, Thank you. <clears throat> on behalf of the town council, uh, the school board, and the citizens of Cape Elizabeth, myself along with people I just mentioned, are here to present our final site plan for your consideration and approval. Improving this project in the November referendum, the citizens of Cape Elizabeth provided a clear mandate that we design a no-frills project <clears throat> which supports and enhances the educational program of the two schools and upgrades the physical plant for the next 20 years. We have a fixed budget which must sustain the construction of this project. Our goal for site development is to provide a safe environment for our children. Of course, mine have already graduated and <laughs> they're off. Uh, separating bus and automobile access ensures this objective while de developing a campus atmosphere. <clears throat> Children's safety, not only in the final plan, but during construction are of prime importance and have been dealt with in the design. The committee, along with our design team, dedicated numerous hours evaluating various options to balance the demands imposed during the design phase. The architects and engineers have met with town department heads, planning staff, abutters, various agencies, to ensure that we fully comply with code and are responsive to the community. Your concerns expressed at the planning board workshops are implemented in the design. I believe it's important to note this is a complex development on a very restrictive site. The committee and school department is unanimous in presenting this as the best plan that achieves the goals and objectives and meets design requirements. At this time, I'd like to introduce Arthur Thompson, who will lead the technical aspects of the plan. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Mr. Emery, Planning Board. Uh, first of all, let me just step back and, and, and uh, recount some of the history of the project. As most of you know, we've been working on this project since February of 1993. Our initial uh, step on it was to really step back, look at the site as a whole, and look at the projects as a whole, the buildings as a whole, to establish the opportunities and constraints of the site. To, to really come up with the committee with a guiding mission statement for the project from beginning to end and to establish the specific goals that the committee wanted to accomplish in this project, especially with regards to the site development. In order to accomplish that, we developed about 10 very conceptual diagrams uh, depicting a variety of alternatives on site, on the existing site including access from all variety of locations, uh, including uh, keeping traffic between the buildings, connecting the buildings, running traffic underneath the connection, uh, examining various locations to add on to both buildings, and uh, of course, the uh, concept of tying the two buildings together. With that uh, work in hand, the committee was able to establish a very uh, solid uh, guidelines, uh, set of guidelines for the site, including, as Paul mentioned, improving the safety on the site. Currently, between the two buildings, the middle school and the elementary school, as you know, traffic flows, cars park, uh, buses move, and uh, people are being dropped off and picked up at a variety of locations along both buildings. That was really sort of the, the most, uh, most uh, important priority established uh, by the committee. Secondly, to, to separate the automobile traffic from the bus traffic, as this diagram does, and, and we'll go through that in a moment. To improve parking, both in terms of quantity, uh, access, location, and also as part, partly as a means of providing better pedestrian access to the facilities. And to improve the access uh, from, on the student's part, 
to uh, open space as well as on the community's part to open space. To maintain all of the existing athletic and play fields uh, and perhaps improve those in the process, to provide access to those open fields for students without crossing traffic or parking lanes. Uh, to promote uh, the, the concept of an educational campus and to provide uh, teaching spaces accessible from, uh, from the school directly for students and staff. In uh, the process of the preparation of the, the, the design that we're presenting tonight, uh, we've met with the town planner and the CEO a number of times, uh, both of whom have been quite helpful to the process. Twice we've formally met with the police, uh, fire, and public works personnel and had many conversations with them informally. Twice we've met with the neighbors to the site and the project has been heard publicly by the town council, the school board, uh, and in the referendum process, as well as through the Board of Appeals. And three times, of course, as you know, we've met with you in workshops. Uh, in the process of all of those meetings and discussions, as well as the work with the committee, uh, we hope that the committee and we have listened well and listened very carefully to the comments that everyone has made in the community. Uh, we hope that we have incorporated those comments, made adjustments, and made, a change, made changes to the design as it, evolved, as it has evolved in response to those comments. With that in mind, I'm going to ask Dennis to walk quickly through the layout on the site and uh, as well, Jerry Audebert is here, our civil engineer working on this project to re respond to your technical questions. Uh, excuse me, Dennis, before you begin, uh, would you please be sure to uh, specifically state what it is that's included within the project and which is not as you go through the circulation schemes and the parking discussions? Okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, uh, Planning Board members. Uh, Paul and Arthur got you to the, to the site, and I'd like to just take you through it and um, talk first about the overall circulation, the overall site layout and organization uh, so that we can have a, a grasp of that and then work back into the specific site. The, as was just mentioned, the prime goal was to uh, eliminate that through traffic from Scott Dyer Road to Route 77 and as a secondary goal to provide uh, separated access or, or separated um, access to the site of cars, buses and students and, and keep them discreet. Um, as part of doing that, we had to, well, as, as part of that process as well as the building uh, design and renovation included uh, removal of the existing bus parking area. So as in terms of the way the whole site is laid out, we had to move that parking down to the existing high school parking lot, which then kind of um, dominoed us into some additional parking that we had not anticipated. Uh, most notably, we have the parking down near the high school along the ditch near the drive into the back of the school, which provides 60 or 59 at this point um, replaced parking spaces from the, the high school parking, as well as showing future parking in the very back of the site, which is still outside of the 250-foot buffer. Um, that future parking is not in the contract, and that is provided on the plan at this point so that we can get it into the design calculations for storm and erosion and sedimentation control, and that at some time in the future when funds are available, uh, that the DEP will have looked at that. We don't have to go back to them, and it's all worked into the calculations. Uh, similarly, um, the town engineer has included a handicapped access to the tennis courts from the vicinity of the high school rear entrance drive right by the, the current kindergarten turnaround loop uh, by the play area, and that is not part of this contract work. The 60 parking spaces, the 59 parking lot replacement for the high school parking is uh, an ad alternate in this contract. And uh, we've been assured that if the prime base bid budget cannot accept or afford that parking, uh, funds will be found to include that because we feel it's a very important part of this. And uh, there's one other kind of overall 
uh, parking circulation master planning issue, uh, we needed to resolve the conflicts with the kindergarten bus drop-off area and cars kind of uh, short-circuiting that uh, appropriate rotary uh, circulation loop and going right across that kind of illegally and then down and out of the high school um, entrance and exit area. Um, in order to accomplish that, we cut out a turnout lane uh, for, that, for the parking bus, for the buses to pull in so that the cars can uh, go by legally um, and the buses can drop off and pick up children um, and allow the cars to go by legally with that appropriate separation, which consists of a small median strip with a, a guardrail in it. The uh, getting then down to the uh, site itself, the, the prime scope of work for this contract, uh, there's w two other items that we have on the plans that are not necessarily in the base bid. The first item is our, we, although we would want to have granite curbing throughout the project, we can't afford that. And we are proposing uh, bituminous curbing throughout. And as an alternate, we are proposing granite curbing around all of the turnaround areas uh, for the plow. Um, and that's a, 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 um, a standard ad alternate to the contract. The other item that we would like to see happen but is not part of the base bid is all of the pedestrian, uh, the sidewalk area along Scott Tire Road, um, the improvements to that. We all recognize we need to do something about that, um, but this project can't afford to do it under the base bid. And we have been assured um, as well by the town manager that on that count, um, funds will be provided from the, the grant money uh, for the town center improvements. So then the um, getting to our site, again, the prime, uh, one of the prime goals was that separation of buses, cars, and students. And accomplishing that, we have uh, provided two separate accesses, one for bus, buses coming in with the children and one for um, uh, parents bringing their, their children in cars. As you can see, the, the lower portion of the site plan here, the buses um, are proposed to come in Jordan Way from Route 77, come around our new uh, turnout or new uh, turnaround, drop off the children there, and then drive out through the high school. Now there's one set of those buses that will be the kindergarten bus, so they come up through this school around to the kindergarten and then out, and then they make another loop for the, uh, the next round. The uh, parents coming with their children uh, will come in through the main entrance off of Scott Dyer Road, which is obviously relocated from its existing location, which was right down across from Hill Way um, near the old uh, high school. Uh, driving into the site, uh, passing the uh, opportunities for parking, and then driving around the turnaround loop, uh, dropping off children there, and the children have access from that point to come into either of the school main entrances, uh, the upper entrance being for the middle school and the lower entrance for Pond Cove Elementary School. Um, they also have the opportunity to go right across that front entrance of the site to the Pond Cove play area, uh, where they can play before school starts. Um, and or just hang out in, that, in the islands and the main entrance uh, that we've designed for that. The main entrance on Scott Dyer Road has been treated with uh, plantings and a and brand new major sign um, announcing the entrance of the school. Uh, and we have also, to support that, have de-emphasized the existing entrance on uh, Scott Dyer Road where it was that double, that major you know, horseshoe loop in and then back out again. Um, we have brought that, which was also very, it was a major traffic congestion problem. We all, we all knew that as well. Uh, so in order to balance those issues, to fix, help fix the traffic issue, but also help visually support the new main entrance, we've de-emphasized this to a single lane for staff parking only. And it's directly across from the Hillway <coughs> center line. And it is also, um, as the site does anyway, it slopes down, but we've sloped it down as much as we can before hopefully we hit ledge so that we can get that parking, that's 18 spaces of staff parking, um, as buried down into the site as possible. Um, and as part of supporting that, as well as the, um, the presence of the old high school on Scott Dyer Road, we've massed in some large trees 
which will, when you're driving up Hill Way, your visual sight line will be essentially hitting those canopies and will not be, uh, it'll be terminated at that point and help um, define that, that space. Uh, once we come into that portion of the site, uh, we have a sidewalk coming from Scott Dyer Road directly in, connecting with the walk in front of the high school and around, and then connecting, picking up with that staff parking lot, and then bringing uh, a series of walks into the courtyard where students can come down Scott Dyer Road and in, can come up and across, and enter the school in these two locations, as can staff. The pedestrian circulation throughout the remainder of the site includes uh, a new sidewalk from uh, the near the intersection of Farm, Farm Hill Road and Scott Dyer Road, uh, coming in parallel with a fence that we can talk about a little bit later, which has been installed to help um, shield headlights from the neighbors. It was one of, one of the results of those meetings that we had with them. Uh, but that walk can come in from Scott Dyer Road along that fence, uh, which is essentially straight along parallel with the school and then it begins to follow the arc of the entrance drive and down into the site and we'll have several uh, striped, this plan doesn't show it, but several striped cross areas uh, for the students to cross uh, those, uh, those necessary pedestrian or vehicle crossings to get into the parking lots. Uh, we have overall 221 parking spaces proposed for this portion of the site. Um, currently, there were 147, I believe, and through the zoning board process, we defined the parking requirement for this to be 200. Uh, we've provided 220 um, by doing a little more than we had. We had around 200, and then we provided 220 by uh, making the spaces 9 feet by 18 feet instead of 10 by 20, uh, with 24-foot aisles. So they're, they're safe and, and roomy, but it helps us get enough parking and minimize the amount of pavement we have to put in. The overall parking, back to the master planning issue for a moment, is um, a wash, essentially, because we, well, it's not a wash, it's a, it's a major increase, because we had 147, now we have 221. Plus, we have not lost any of that high school student parking. Plus, we have provided for um, an appropriately designed and, and doable 50 space parking lot down behind the high school, which is that re future parking referred to earlier. The, again, getting back down into um, the main entrance area of the site, we do have that, that walk coming down through uh, from Scott Dyer Road, and we have a series of walks on the site to get from the various places, uh, parking areas, to the main entrances. Uh, those include a handicapped parking and a walkway along this area right to any of these three entrances, uh, the drop-off and then the, the handicapped ramps on both of these locations and then into the whole pedestrian link uh, into the, the two buildings. Um, we have the walk extends all the way down the outside of the entrance drive and all the way around the loop back to this point here. So for stacking purposes, there's plenty of room for cars to come in and park. And um, students are able to walk all the way around to their cars without crossing the traffic. Um, and we've provided 24 foot wide um, drives throughout the site so that there's ample maneuvering room if there's a car parked waiting for a child. Other cars coming through can still get around them. So we've got parking in this vicinity, handicap parking and um, 9 by 18 parking in this vicinity and then parking all the way along parallel to the entrance drive and then this larger parking area um, outside of that uh, which is connected in uh, two to three ways to the front entrance. The first being um, a, what could be a handicapped access ramp. It's not designed to be because there's no designated parking there but it's accessible. It's a less than 5% slope up to the main entrance. Uh, we have proposed, although it's not shown on this plan, uh, a straight shot up to this link for people coming in to this portion of the parking lot and coming up to the main entrance of the site. And then people coming around here can just pick up this, uh, this section of the walk and come in. This is shown as grass, but it's really pavement here. This walk extends up to the edge, edge 
and there's a walk that extends um, along the base of this parking, which all serves to pick up all the parking um, pedestrians coming or the, the people coming from the parking spaces in these locations. Um, that being the, uh, the, the, the prime or the, the major overview of the pedestrian circulation as well, um, in general, in terms of uh, plantings to support the design, we have uh, done what we can best do with, um, as Paul uh, mentioned before, it is a very tight budget. It might not seem like it, but it really is uh, to make this all work. And we've tried to do the best with uh, the money that we have to, uh, to support that which includes the plantings as you see. Um, we have a massing of plants up at the main entrance. We have some, uh, what well, we tried to get a strong uh, barrier or visual screen at the uh, courtyard, but we had to also uh, work that in with the uh, fire access um, and the walks and the lighting that we need in that area. And we have uh, a relocated uh, monument um, in the same general location as it is right now, uh, still on center line coming up Hillway and uh, we're gonna, there's a, an existing apple tree right there we have to relocate, but we can work that into the composition. And then some plantings in the vicinity of the main entrance to soften some of those existing uh, building facades and to provide shade for that uh, um, summer conditions or spring, uh, early fall conditions um, and provide green relief throughout the site. Uh, athletic facilities on the site are substantially uh, in place as they were before, uh, the existing, well, the major ball field and the soccer field is untouched. The other soccer field and field hockey fields and the other ball fields are all um, as they are, as is the baseball field up in for the middle school in this portion of the site. Uh, the only thing we have done is we have lost the uh, practice field hockey uh, location, which is right at the toe of the slope of the, the large main baseball field um, to that parking need to help support um, the displaced parking. Um, and these, um, the athletic facilities as they are apparently, I mean, um, they are um, as they were and they all will continue to function as they have and without disruption. We have a basketball court that is an ad alternate as well. I missed that one before. Uh, that's not in the base bid. Um, there are two basketball courts right at the end of the D wing and now we're proposing one regulation basketball court um, in this location. Um, but again, that's an ad alternate. Um, that hopefully gives you an overview of uh, what we're designing into the site and how we uh, see it working. And um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to take those or we can um, proceed into the completeness discussion. Thank you. Uh I know there are other experts uh, that you brought along. Uh, this is a completeness uh, discussion this evening. I wanted the overview just so that we all had a common understanding of the project that's before us. Uh, we have, although you don't see them on the table, we do have a packet that has a very large set of drawings. I believe they're three by four feet. Uh, and with the new microphones there, they're almost uh, impossible to deal with. Perhaps in the future, a half size uh, set would be appropriate. Uh, or a size reduced to such a scale reduced to such a size that it, it stays to scale, but it's, it's more manageable. Uh, at this point, what I'd like to do is to open it up for board discussion, again, uh, keeping in mind that we're dealing with the issue of completeness. Uh, Ms. Lydon? Um, I'd be happy to go over um, <clears throat> the summary of completeness we have in our memo, like I often do. Um, first off, it's my opinion, I think that the plans are pretty much complete and I can go item by item. Um, item one is the elevations of proposed bus shed have not been submitted. Um, there were some elevations in the application booklet, but I question whether this item is even appropriate to consider at the moment since the BZA has not um, approved it anyway. So it's my understanding we can't act on certain aspects unless the zoning board has. Okay. Um, uh, Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, can we comment? Uh, I think we're going through this in the right way. Do you want to comment on, as we go through them, or? or yeah, why don't we do that? We'll go down item by item and get. And then what we'll do is we'll go down the issues item by item, and we'll get all of the board's comment on that item at one time. I concur with with, with Judy as far as the completeness issue here. I, I think, and then maybe I just simply didn't see it when you fold the the 
three by four out, got an eight foot long uh, plan to, to look at, but I, I also didn't see uh, elevations of the north side of, of Middle and, and Pond Cove. Um, I, th I didn't see any even artist rendering of the courtyards. Um, again, uh, that's not a matter of, of completeness, it's, it's a matter of detailing. Um, I, I think they've presented us with elevations. Of, of this. I think it would be most helpful with the applicant if we go through the completeness issue, do whatever we're going to do with that, and then go back down through the list and, and, and detail it. Okay, so you're going to go through the whole list yourselves first? Yes. And then. I guess I would uh, ask Maureen, uh, what is the issue with the Zoning Board of Appeals on the shed? Um, they just haven't received plans that they can review. And I, my understanding is that they're going to be uh, acting on that at the next meeting, which is next week. Uh, but they're going to be acting specifically on, on the bus garage, the bus shed, and on the portables, which they just haven't received plans on yet. Um, while the board is not allowed to make any, take any application until the action has been taken by the zoning board, um, you're, you're kind of caught in a position, are you going to do a two-step completeness? Um, you may want to go ahead and look at those items now, at least in terms of completeness. Um, and then um, I, I s suspect the board will be not taking any final action until after the zoning board's uh, action next week anyway. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments on the issue of elevations? Um, Judy would continue. Item 5C, it speaks about an existing sewer easement that extends to Farm Hill Road, which is not shown on the plans. Um, I'd consider the plans complete, if only because we do have a um, standard boundary survey, which was done by um, Bruce Lewis recently. And given the amount of plans that he references, and that the fact that he does show another easement on here, if he couldn't find that easement, I think it's extremely understandable. And if there is such an easement, I think it should be shown on the plans. But I think for completeness purposes, we're OK. Any other board comment on easements? Uh, I will add, I don't believe it's an issue of uh, completeness, but I would like it addressed uh, before the next meeting. And that's the issue of uh, encumbrances or people whose fence lines are intruding upon um, uh, school property or town property. I think now is the time to resolve that uh, in some form. Uh, continue, Judy. Item 6A, which speaks uh, about a phasing plan which hasn't been submitted. There is a phasing plan of sorts in the application booklet. I find it extremely difficult to understand, but it's there. I, I would agree. It, it's um, inadequate, but it's there. So it's, uh, it's a completeness issue. Uh, I find it acceptable. Okay. Item 60, a parking plan. Again, parking is addressed in that phasing plan. It says the number of spaces that will be provided during construction and does show numbers in lots that add up to 157 spaces. But again, it's tough to understand. <coughs> Item 10, location of student drop-off. On that same phasing plan, there is some indication of a student drop-off area. It seems woefully inadequate, but it's on there. Item 12A, speaking about erosion control measures, there is extensive information in the submitted plans about erosion control on the site. I think it was an oversight that the parking lot doesn't have a silt fence on it, and I feel comfortable calling that complete. Item 12B, with respect to the town engineer comments, um, he has many valid concerns that need to be addressed, but I don't think they're completion issues. Item 12C, um, town engineers asking for a letter from the Portland Water District. Um, again, I concur with that, but since we're not talking about an increase in water and there is adequate water now, I think completeness has been addressed. Item 12D, with respect to um, disposal of demolition debris, I don't think that's really a completeness issue. And item 13, with respect to um, a preservation plan for protecting trees, there is, land, there is notation about trees that are to be preserved, even though there's no mechanism. But we also just approved a project that did not have much of a mechanism for final approval. So I think this stands for completeness. Any other issues? 
Mr. Chairman, I, as always in the completeness, there are other issues that I think are important, but none that stand in the way of what I would deem a complete application. <coughs> Would the board be uh, willing to entertain a motion at this point? <clears throat> I'd be happy to make one. Motion with the board to consider be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the school department for a site plan review of renovations and construction located at the middle and elementary schools be deemed complete. Second. A uh, motion has been uh, brought forth and, and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all of those in favor, please indicate by raising your right hand. Passes unanimously. What we'd like to do, I, we have uh, the rest of the evening open to us, and we'd <coughs> certainly like to get us home as early as anyone else, but I think at this point it would be uh, worth, uh, well, we have two options here. We can discuss uh, the issues that we'd like clarified uh, further, or we can discuss the issue of a uh, public hearing and site walk, um, if the board has a preference. Ms. Lardin? Mr. Chair, I would certainly um, favor a public hearing as well as a site walk. Okay. And I'm not at all averse, though, to um, a lot of discussion tonight. Okay. Well, I guess what I would like to do then is um, I would like to uh, set a time for a site walk uh, and uh, assuming that the items that are discussed before we uh, get waylaid with a discussion, I'd like to set a time for a site walk uh, and then uh, discuss with the applicant when the applicant feels they could be uh, prepared for a public hearing. This is March, oh, the Ides of March. At two. Um, when would the applicant be prepared? Uh, would you be prepared for the April regular meeting in April? <clears throat> Do you have a preference uh, for a public hearing? In the past, we've had applicants that prefer to have it as close to the meeting date as possible so that the revised materials can be uh, brought or be prepared to some extent for the site walk. <laughs> Do you have any preferences? I'm not quite sure I understand. Option, our options. Uh, when would the public? We're just trying to set a, a <coughs> the, the public hearing. I believe if we have adequate time for notice. Could be as soon as the April meeting, assuming that the items that we discuss in uh, for additional information aren't aren't uh, too extensive. Yes, we would like to have it at that next April okay. 25th meeting. All right. And then you will uh, get together with Maureen and and uh, be clear on the submittal dates and the notification dates. Uh, let's let's set a. Uh, time for a site walk then if everyone would like to have a site walk. Uh, the days still aren't uh, quite as long as they could be so it appeared that it would, uh, Saturday morning would be preferable. Um, does anyone have any preferences? 21st, 28th, uh, sorry, 26th or the 2nd of April? 20, uh, 26th would be preferable for me. Sorry. Okay, why don't we set it then? Uh, I won't be available. You won't be available. Until around 9.30. 9.30, you start okay. Me. Uh, Maureen won't be available until 9.30. Does anyone object to starting that late? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You can start with that. <laughs> I think it's valuable that you're there. Why don't we set it for uh, 9.30, uh, Saturday, March 26th, and we'll meet uh, in front of the gym entrance at the middle school. Okay. All right. Now that we're done with business, when we go uh, back, we have uh, several items uh, for possible discussion. I guess I would uh, open the meeting back up to the board and, and see that we can go through and bring as much clarity to the applicant as possible. Mr. Chairman, before we start that, um, the scheduling of a public hearing, does that require a motion or a vote of the board? Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's good. It does require a motion, but you could wait until the end of your discussion to make it. Okay. Why don't we do that? Uh, does anybody have any uh, any additional uh, 
issues that they would like to present to the client, uh, to the applicant tonight <laughs> uh, so that they uh, can have as much information before them as possible for the public hearing. Judy? I have pages, but I don't know where to start. I don't know if we should go through the comments that Maureen brings up first and then go on to others. I, uh, I, I think so that we have a similar format from which we're all working, that's probably advisable. Uh, and I, it's possible uh, so that we don't linger until midnight. I think if we can give a general gist and direction without getting into specifics, because the engineer's report is fairly specific, and I think the town planner's uh, information is, is reasonably specific. But why don't you start off? It, looking at our memo under possible issues for discussion, um, with respect to the um, main school entrances being on the interior of the site, we've had a lot of discussion about that. I still feel that the front of the school needs to have, or what I view as the front of the school, ha needs to have some presence. They've, the plans do show signs, I believe only on the interior pond cove door and I assume that it was an oversight that the middle school door wouldn't have a sign over it also, but I think that needs to be played up somehow, especially given in, the, in a um, special event there may be parking that is done in the teacher's lot and people would be entering that way. Mr. Chair, uh, just to, to comment on that, um, this is one of the reasons I mentioned, <clears throat> and maybe I missed the, the elevations of, of the north face of, of the middle school in Pond Cove. There's, there's nowhere that I, I found anyway in the um, in the pack that I got, um, maybe even an artist's rendering of that street face would, would be easier to, to deal with than, than an elevation. Was I wrong? Did I miss uh, north elevations of Mill? Okay. Maybe that uh, would suffice to, to see an artist's rendering from that uh, street scene to give us a sense. I mean, that's an issue, I think, with a number of us, uh, that that's you get to have a, a visual impact of that. That's not necessarily a back end of an institution. It's a You're talking about the Pond Cove? Pond Cove and the, the middle school, the historical uh, right. old high school. That remains as it is right now. We're not really making any changes to that, uh, the elevation of the historic part of the building or the end of the uh, elementary section. Uh, I think Dennis mentioned that when you come along here, actually the trees are going to uh, be up at a level where you're not going to really see this and, and the grade drops off quite a lot right. as you go down there. Uh, there